If you found this video, you're probably stuck in an installation process, but this video is here to help. Today we're going to be covering the entire installation process for the 56 inch Home Decorators Collection Altura ceiling fan. This video installation is the same exact process for the 68 inch version. We're just doing the 56 because it's a little bit smaller and it fits in our lab here. Uh, first and foremost, um, just a little tip. At this point, if you are frustrated, a wise man once told me, stop, have a popsicle. You can't be mad when you're having a popsicle. So we'll pause for a second, let you find your popsicle, or just take a deep breath. We're here to help. So let's get started. We have the full ceiling fan unpacked here. We're gonna look at the manual, and the first thing we wanna do is check that all the parts are present to make sure that we don't get stuck at a certain point because we're missing a part. So if you look in the manual here, this piece here is the warranty card. It's a good idea to fill this out and send it in. That way you're covered in case anything happens to the ceiling fan. So here in the installation manual is the parts page. So we're just gonna go piece by piece and make sure that everything's present. The first part listed is the mounting bracket. The mounting bracket is located inside the canopy and the canopy ring. It's a three in one part and we'll show you how to take that apart later on. The next part is the ball and down rod assembly. There's a ground wire tucked in. You wanna pull that out. Then the, uh, the canopy, the motor, we have the switch cup. The switch cup has the remote control receiver already pre-installed. It's a nice convenient feature. We have the decorative motor collar cover, five blades, a switch cup adapter, the remote control with the batteries included, You have the hardware pack, which has your blade attachment screws and the plastic wire nuts for the wire connections. And then this hardware pack that has the decorative nuts that cover the screws on the fan blade. An important thing to note is before you get started, make sure the power is off at the breaker box and the wall switch. We like to use a voltage tester. You just place that up against the wire to make sure that there's no electricity running through. If you don't feel comfortable with electricity, please consult with a licensed electrician. Next is if you're just replacing a ceiling fan, chances are the outlet box is compatible and is acceptable for ceiling fan use. You wanna make sure that inside the outlet box, it clearly says acceptable for ceiling fan support. If you're replacing just the light fixture, chances are that the, the outlet box isn't uh, acceptable and it could possibly break and cause your fan to fall. So you just wanna make sure you have the right outlet box. And some of the tools that we're gonna to use are the wire strippers, Phillips screwdriver, wire cutters, and electrical tape. So let's get started. The UPC number is located on the top of the motor housing as well as on the box. This number will help customer service identify the exact model of fan that you have if you ever call them for help. It's a good idea to write this number down and keep it in a safe spot. The mounting bracket is pre-assembled inside the canopy with the canopy ring attached. To remove the mounting bracket, first twist the canopy ring counterclockwise. This will allow you to remove the canopy ring and expose the screws holding the mounting bracket. There are two J-slotted screws and two standard screws located on opposite ends of the canopy. Simply loosen the J-slotted screws and remove and save the standard screws. Once the screws have been loosened or removed, just twist the mounting bracket to remove it from the canopy. To install the slide-on mounting bracket, loosen the screws in the outlet box and feed the house supply wire through the opening in the top of the bracket. Then align the keyhole slots with the screws of the outlet box and slide the mounting bracket into position. Once the mounting bracket is in place, use a screwdriver to securely tighten the screws. To begin, remove the caution label attached to the set screw. Then, using a flathead screwdriver, loosen but do not remove the set screw. The set screw will be tightened after the down rod is threaded into the coupler. To route the wires, first remove the rubber band holding the wires in a bundle. 
Then route the wires through the canopy ring, making sure that the slots on the top of the canopy ring are towards the ceiling. Then route the wires through the decorative motor collar cover. Make sure the widest part is towards the fan. Then route the wires through the canopy. Make sure the slots on the top of the canopy are facing towards the ceiling. Finally, route the wires through the ball and downrod assembly. Insert the wires at the bottom of the downrod with the threaded portion so that the wires exit through the top with the ball portion. Then gently pull the wires through the ball and downrod assembly. Insert the end of the ball and downrod assembly through the canopy and then slide the decorative motor collar cover onto the downrod. Now you can install the downrod into the motor collar coupler. To install the downrod, simply thread the downrod into the threaded motor collar coupler. The Home Decorators Collection has added a safety tab on the side of the motor collar that will lock into place should the downrod ever loosen over time. This is an added security and stability feature. If you ever need to remove the downrod, simply pull the tab away from the motor collar coupler while unscrewing the downrod. Hand tighten the downrod so that it is securely into position. Once the downrod is fully tightened and in position, tighten the set screw that was loosened at the beginning of this procedure. Once the set screw is tightened, slide the decorative motor collar cover over the motor collar. Trimming the wires is a good idea for an easy installation. To trim the wires, simply measure about 9 or 10 inches from the top of the ball and downrod assembly. Then take wire cutters and cut the wires. Then using a wire stripper, strip off about a half inch of insulation from each wire. The fan is shipped with a protective cardboard ring in the motor. You'll want to remove that before hanging the fan. Now, your fan is ready to be hung. The slide-on mounting bracket features a notch located at the base of the bracket where the ball will sit. The alignment slot in the ball and downrod assembly will line up with the notch. This demonstration shows how the ball should be properly seated in the mounting bracket with the notch aligned in the alignment slot. This will ensure stability of operation and prevent the fan from moving. Lift the fan and place the ball and downrod assembly into the mounting bracket. Make sure the ball and downrod assembly is properly seated in the mounting bracket by twisting the entire assembly. Once the alignment slot is on the notch in the mounting bracket, the ball and downrod assembly will not twist any further. To wire the fan to the house supply, Begin by taking the green wire from the mounting bracket and the green wire from the ball and downrod assembly. Twist the strands together. Once those strands are twisted together, connect those to the ground wire from the house. This could be a bare copper wire or possibly a green wire. Secure the connection using a plastic wire nut that was included in the hardware pack. Once the plastic wire nut is connected, secure the connection with a piece of electrical tape. This will ensure that the wires don't loosen over time with fan operation. Next, take the white wire from the fan and connect it to the white wire from the house supply. Simply twist the strands together and complete the connection using a plastic wire nut included in your hardware pack. Once the plastic wire nut is connected, use a piece of electrical tape to secure the connection. Then, take the black wire from the fan and connect that with the black wire from the house supply. Twist the strands together and secure the connection using a plastic wire nut included with your hardware pack. Once the plastic nut is twisted in place, use a piece of electrical tape to secure the connection. Once all the wire connections are completed, push the wires into the outlet box in the mounting bracket. This will allow for easy canopy installation. 
To attach the canopy to the mounting bracket, simply line up the J slots with the screws that were loosened in the mounting bracket. Push the canopy up and twist into position. This will hold the canopy in place while you tighten the J slot screws. You will need the two screws that were removed in the first step. Insert those screws into the holes and completely tighten to complete the installation of the canopy. Once the screws are completely tightened, align the slots on the top of the canopy ring with the screws in the canopy. Push the canopy ring towards the ceiling and twist clockwise to lock it in place. There are three parts necessary for blade installation. The decorative bolt with the alignment post, the blade attachment screws, and the fan blade itself. The screws just insert into the post in the decorative bolt. The post will align and insert into the hole in the blade bracket. Begin the blade attachment process by inserting a decorative bolt into the hole in the blade. Then align the post of the bolt with the hole in the mounting bracket so that it inserts into the hole. Then thread a blade attachment screw into the decorative bolt and tighten with the screwdriver. Be sure not to over tighten as over tightening may cause the blade to crack. We found it easiest to start with the middle hole to hold the fan blade into position, which will easily allow for the decorative bolts to align with the mounting brackets for the two remaining holes. Just repeat this process for the two remaining holes and then for the four remaining blades. To attach the switch cup adapter, locate the three screws located on the black bracket below the motor. You'll have to remove and save one screw and then loosen the two other screws. This will align with the standard hole and the two keyhole slots on the switch cup adapter. Remove and save the first screw and then just loosen the two other remaining screws. With the flat side of the switch cup adapter facing towards the fan, route the wires through the center hole of the switch cup adapter and align the keyhole slots with the two screws that were loosened. Let the screws come through the keyhole slots and then twist the switch cup adapter to hold it in place. Next, partially tighten the two screws in the keyhole slots. This will move the switch cup adapter closer to the motor and allow for an easier alignment for the screw that was removed and saved in the first step. Then align the standard hole in the switch cup adapter with the hole in the black bracket and insert the screw that was removed and saved in the first step. Fully tighten this screw to secure the switch cup adapter. Once this screw is tightened, you can fully tighten the two remaining screws in the keyhole slots. To attach the switch cup, loosen two of the screws in the switch cup adapter and remove and save one screw. The two loose screws will align with the J slots in the switch cup, and the screw that's removed and saved will insert and align and screw into the standard hole in the switch cup. Connect the molded adapter plug from the switch cup with the molded adapter plug from the fan. Tuck the wires into the switch cup and align the J slots on the switch cup with the screws that were loosened in the switch cup adapter. Once the slots are aligned with the screws, simply twist to hold in place. Align the standard hole in the switch cup with the hole in the switch cup adapter and use the screw that was removed and saved. Insert the screw into the hole and tighten with the screwdriver. Then complete the installation by securely tightening the two screws in the J slots. The Altura fan includes a handy remote control and includes the battery as well. Before using the battery, you must remove the film to expose the contacts. Once the battery film is removed, use your thumb to remove the battery cover. Then insert the battery into the remote control as stated in the battery diagram in the battery compartment. Then replace the battery cover. 
If you have another remote control ceiling fan in your house, you may want to change the dip switches in the remote to avoid possible interference between ceiling fan remote controls. To do so, locate the dip switches in the battery compartment and set them to your desired setting using a screwdriver or a pen. No need to change dip switches in the receiver, it will learn during the automatic pairing process. To pair the remote control with the ceiling fan, return power to the ceiling fan. Within 30 seconds, press and hold the off button for 5 full seconds. To confirm that the remote pairing was successful, press the 1, 2, or 3 button. The fan should turn on. If not, please repeat the pairing process. The Altura fan features a 3-speed reversible motor for seasonal operation. To reverse the fan direction and airflow, the fan must be on and moving. Then, just press the reverse button on the remote control. The fan will slowly come to a stop and then reverse direction. Remember, the fan must be on and moving or the reverse button will not function. The remote features a wall cradle for convenient storage when the remote is not in use. To attach the wall cradle, pick a convenient location and use the two included screws. Simply screw the wall cradle into the wall. The Altura ceiling fan is light kit adaptable. To add a light kit, you must remove the switch cup. Do so by loosening the two J-slotted screws and removing and saving the standard screw. Once the screws are removed, twist the switch cup adapter and unplug the molded adapter plugs. To attach the light kit to the switch cup, you'll first have to remove the remote control receiver. Do so by removing and saving the two screws holding the receiver on the bracket in the switch cup. Once the screws are removed, simply lift the receiver out of the switch cup and place off to the side. Then, you'll need to remove the nut inside the switch cup, holding the decorative bottom cover on the switch cup. Simply twist the bottom cover off and remove the nut. Remove the nut and washer from the threaded nipple located on the top of the light kit where the wires are. Once the nut is loose, run the nut down the wires and remove the wires one by one. Both the molded adapter plugs will not fit through the nut at the same time. Remove the wires one by one. Next, feed the wires through the hole in the bottom of the switch cup. It is easiest to do it one by one as the molded adapter plugs are difficult to get through the hole at the same time. Insert the threaded nipple from the light kit through the hole in the bottom of the switch cup and then route the wires one by one through the washer and the nut. Then using a pair of pliers, make sure the nut is completely tightened. To reinstall the remote receiver, you'll need to route the wires through the receiver so they exit the top. Begin by routing the wires one by one through the bottom of the receiver. Then gently pull the wires through the receiver. Next, align the screw tabs of the receiver with the mounting bracket in the switch cup. Use the screws that were removed and saved to reattach the remote receiver inside the switch cup. When the remote receiver is removed, it's not uncommon for the bracket to expand a little bit, so you may have to push the tab of the bracket towards the receiver to get the screw to align properly. After the remote receiver has been reinstalled, it's time to connect the wiring. Take the black wire from the light kit and connect it to the blue wire from the receiver. Then, take the white wire from the light kit and connect that to the white wire from the receiver. If the light kit doesn't have plugs like this, just strip the wires and connect using plastic wire nuts. 
To install the switch cup with the light kit attached, first connect the molded adapter plugs. Then push the wires gently into the switch cup and align the J slots with the loosened screws in the switch cup adapter. Using the screw that was removed and saved, align the hole in the switch cup with the hole in the switch cup adapter. Insert the screw and tighten into place. Then tighten the two loose screws that are located in the two J slots of the switch cup. Install the CFL bulbs by inserting the base of the bulb into the socket and turning counterclockwise until they are hand tightened. Be careful not to over tighten the bulbs. To install the glass bowl, you'll need the bowl, the medallion, and the finial. Place the glass bowl over the pull chain and the threaded nipple. Holding the bowl in place, feed the pull chain and the threaded nipple through the center hole of the medallion. Then, thread the pull chain through the center hole in the finial and finger tighten the finial onto the threaded nipple. Then, attach the pull chain extension to the beaded chain using the connector included. Before using the remote control to control the light kit, you have to turn the light kit on using the pull chain. Once the light is on using the pull chain, then the remote can take over control of the on and off function. The ceiling fan installation is now complete. Congratulations! Sit back and enjoy your handiwork. Good job! If you found this video helpful, Click the thumbs up down below and give us a like, or subscribe to the channel, you never know what fan we'll install next.